Um, so what I am now doing is I am uh, talking with people that have some experiences like I've had and, and with people like yourselves that have had direct contact experiences and Tommy and uh, we're we're willing now to come forward because up until just very recently, uh, you know, you say anything at all about, well, you know, this thing happened and that happened. Everybody says, oh, yeah, you're, you're full of, you know, woo-woo <laughs> and nuts. But then now – they're they're starting to see things and hear things, and everybody's becoming a little bit more understanding and willing to research themselves and find out just exactly what is going on and what part of this are we playing. So that's where that secret space program is, is now starting to – some of the layers of secrecy are starting to peel away, and that's, I think, where we're, we need to do our best to find out all the information we can well, so we can have po- positive positive information, not just theory or, or – that's the problem I had well, with the gentleman I mentioned can, earlier. Well, yeah, the world's like an onion, and we're peeling back the layers. Everybody's got layers, well, and then everybody's got their own story. But I brought people together like Tommy and Gene, as the authors, to do Stargate to the Cosmos. But now we're going to – just so you know, Tommy, I'm speaking January 12th about uh, – and you can help me because uh, there's portals. But Tommy was talking about the darker side, and uh, he wants to talk just positive spiritual side – but uh, I'm going to let him talk for a moment now, Ken, because uh, we were talking about things coming through wormholes and things like that. And that is part of the secret space program right. because it was kept secret. But he, he goes right. back and shared a lot of the mind talk and the energy. And I don't know that he has a handle on how it all works, but he does have his experience. So that's why I'm trying to get him to come from his personal experiences because he's done a whole lot of shows on spirituality, but Tommy, remember in the beginning we talked about a lot of this stuff, and I mentioned it last night during wormhole portals, and then those clouds that you were talking about that Ken hadn't heard about. But uh, why don't you? You wanted to say something, Tommy, so please go ahead and then well, tell the, him the about thing, that. I just you work for NASA, right? Oh yeah, for about fourteen uh, years. Just two names. Can I ask you two names? Sure. Could I ask you two names? Maybe you heard of them. Okay. okay, do you remember they spent, sent, sent a space shuttle up into space with all artifacts from everybody in it? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of do you know who was involved with that? Do you know who it was? Uh, oh, my memory wouldn't, wouldn't spew it out right now. I'd have to well, go back can, and pull if up. I, if I say a name, I don't know if I should say it on air or not. Uh, it's, it's, it's his, first name, got... his first name was Matthew. Matthew, no. Well, he that sent us a letter. Else. Well, basically, uh, he sent us a letter from NASA. I got the letters here right in front of me. Oh, yeah. It warned, Great. It warned Sergio and I not to get involved. I'll read it to you. But uh, it's saying, don't get involved. You don't have any right to interfere with what's going to happen to the human race. Uh, six months later, he was killed. There, there have been right. Wow. That I remember happened. seeing that. Yeah. But here's another now thing. Was, My best okay. friend. My best friend designed all the parts for the space shuttle that they couldn't make generally. Uh, any special kind of part, he designed all these parts. I took him to my house, and I showed him all our UFO pictures. We were going to get together. We were going to do something different. We were going to c- commit a, create a community somewhere. His okay. whole family disappeared two days later. Uh, his children were taken out of school. They never found him, never saw him, never heard another word from him. His phone oh. was left on for a year. I was, well, I was working for the phone company, and I tried to track the phone and everything. The, they had it on just to record whoever called him, and I kept saying, release him, release him, tell me where he is. Uh, but nothing ever happened of that. But he, I knew him when I was 12 years old, so it wasn't like a strange friend. I knew him all my life. He always right. wanted to work. We were playing with spacemen when we were little, and then he goes, I want to build a spaceship. So he actually ended up working for NASA. Working. So he disappeared. Within two days after we showed him the UFO pictures and everything else, he said to me, i got to be careful. They don't want me involved with the UFO world. And then he disappeared. Uh, okay. His name was, if I say his name, would it ring a bell maybe? Robert Sylvester? Maybe. Maybe. Sylvester? Because he was a good friend. Yeah. He was a good friend. No. Uh, yeah. And we were going to leave. We were going to start a community somewhere because he said, it'll be separate because I can create anything we need. We don't have to go outside the community. Like if a, if a machine broke, you can make the parts to fix it, whatever. So uh, 
it was like a three ton machine that he used to make all these parts for NASA. And then he just went missing. And I never had another word of sound from, we were supposed to have a, a, a pool party two days later. And his I saw whole the kids were taken out of school. His whole family whole disappeared family within two days. Yeah. Oh, okay. I might, my so, but uh, he was a good friend. I, I'll, I, I'll almost guarantee you that the whole family is, is alive and safe. Now, I ran into a similar situation because I had, I had because of the secret clearances and all the, where I'd had direct contact uh, with NASA on looking at um, some of the original films and pictures and things and showing a base on the backside of the moon and uh, some other things. And we were, we were sworn to secrecy and maintain that. Now, uh, fortunately, uh, we're talking about since I left NASA in 1980, right, and then I went to work uh, at, up to Martin Marriott up in Denver and then working on the Peacekeeper and then up to Vandenberg, I mean from Vandenberg up to Seattle with the, the, the Boeing Company. Um, whenever um, Mr. Hoagland was looking at the face on Mars and all that and saying there's people out there that has information that they need to come forward and, and make it public for their own safety. And I was listening to the, the radio program and I thought, well, you know, maybe I should. So I, I put together a documentation. I went to the meeting and um, walked up to the desk to pay my, my ticket to, to go to the, uh, the um, uh, program that he was doing in Seattle. <laughs> and she just panicked. She said, oh, you're who we've been looking for. And they brought him out and, and he looked at it and he says, oh, we got to get together tomorrow. And um, it just so happens. He says, that we, he says, we've got to make you public. Now, this is what I was going to tie into what you're saying. That if, so long as you keep your mouth shut and your own, then you can be disappear. They can get rid of you, and that's, well, that see, has happened he, to so many people. He wanted, he wanted to pull out of the government. He wanted to build a community where we would be self-sustaining without anybody. Uh, no, but but that, we were going to talk about that. A threat. It made a threat right. in no, no, I, the information. Yeah, but well, that's, that's why that's I thought he was taken out. Yeah. They, uh, they, well, I know. The just, and, go ahead. I'm listening. Six of my right, friends were taken out. All right, six of my friends. But John Ford, right. I don't know if you know his whole story. Uh, he's in the nut house. They won't let him out. But I saw his video before they put him away. Yeah. Uh, he sent it around the world. But it's the best video of a ship crashed on Long Island. Crystal the clear. Crashed on Long. Uh, hmm. Yeah. I went out there where it crashed. I saw where the ship came down. It notched out all the trees. I was, like I said, I was living in one of the richest people in Long Island's house, who is the surveyor who built all the houses on Long Island. And he has, he, he showed me all the articles. He was in his room. He's got this big glass window that overlooks the ocean and a ship went right, right. into the ocean, but him and his girlfriend were burnt. Right. And when they called I the did, hospital up, the hospital it. told, well, the hospital told him to take three aspirins and go to bed. <laughs> and they then did. They always... But don't, but they woke up. Okay. The burn marks, everything was gone. There was no proof of any. So they were already prepared to tell people not to come to the hospital, not to make a big thing out of it, <laughs> which it was all over the newspapers the next day. He showed me all the articles. But right. I was dealing with the, last night, the, uh, the creature that, that escaped because underneath his house, there was all these skeletons of all kinds of animals all laid out perfectly straight. And uh, if an animal kills an animal and they eat it, they're not going to lay the skeleton in the perfect form, shape, and line them up in a row all across the floor of the house. And he kept telling me there's something in the house. I said all kinds of traps. Because he went, he went to another country for a couple months, and I, I was babysitting the house room. A beautiful house, but uh, I kept hearing all these weird noises and trying to track whatever it was. And then when I went under the house, I, I took all the skeletons that were there. Every kind of creature, fox, wolves, um, uh, you name it, and it was, they just had, they were lined out in perfect shape, so it wasn't like they uh, bent them up, twist them, or ate them, or anything like that, so whatever it was, I mean, I ended up seeing the Hershey monkey, uh, it was about a month later, that was also escaped from the Monto Project, I was up in Wanaku, okay. where the vortex is, where the real vortex on this planet is, and uh, we just got out of the car, and I started walking. I saw something running, so I started chasing. It was white. It looked like a white squirrel, kind of, from the distance, from where I was chasing it. And then it jumped right into right. a tree, and hmm. it disappeared in the tree. But uh, the next night is when I saw a Bigfoot up there at the same place. Uh, and it was like the vortex, which Sargell 18 and I were the only people going on it. It's government property. 
It's sealed by the steel, steel fence, and it says if you get caught on this property, you will be shot. But we went in there for three years, yep. uh, and we filmed every kind of creature you could imagine. Yeah. Right. Well, we never got shot, but we saw things happen that were incredible. The whole mountain would light up, okay. and we see these cars up on the top of the mountains and stuff, and then it would go, all the lights would just go out. I think that's when they lost the Bigfoot. I think they had it, and that's when they lost it because I saw it like that was like a week before I saw it. Uh, but we saw we saw a lot of we didn't see the things, but we got pictures of them through certain techniques and everything of creatures, you name it. Uh, but that's all based on what Tesla was doing because that's when he flooded. They flooded the city uh, for nine months. Ships went in and out of that reservoir. Uh, my friend lived right there. He watched this go down. Yeah. Let me, let me try to tie something in there with you now, because and, and, I just picked up a, a little bit when um, TJ was talking to us. Um, one of the things that I found rather interesting, and I guess my one of my first cousins, uh, Dr. Don, Don Garrett, he was an Air Force captain and a pilot, and he was part of the, the original to be the um, uh, the Air Force space program, but then the cut back in government funding, and he dropped out. But he, he came to NASA as, as a uh, – between – NASA and the Air Force and the government, he became one of the uh, astronauts to uh, test uh, the command module in the vacuum chamber, whereas here I was with Roman, and I was <laughs> the same family, my first cousin. Here I am over uh, just, you know, what, 50 yards away, not even that, to the smaller vacuum chamber, Chamber B, to test the, the little module. Now, whenever Apollo 1, uh, Grissom, Chaffee, and White died, um, we were in such a hurry to, to beat the Russians to the moon that um, certain things were uh, kind of passed over and thought it'd be safe, or, or the fact that Grissom and them were complaining about some of the design and equipment, stuff like that, and, and they, they even put on some, some press experience, uh, you get clothes and things to show how bad some of the designs and things were, and then all of a sudden they're ready, getting ready for the first launch, and um, the command module catches on fire, and they all died immediately. Well, Don Garrett, uh, my cousin, he he felt the calling then, and he became a, a Baptist minister, left the Air Force. Let me close this door so my dog's not barking and <laughs> going on there. I think the dog is going to be a part of the uh, space program here. Here we go. <laughs> anyway, okay. Got it. <laughs> Some of them may be. You never know. At any rate, so Don um, became uh, very, very, very religious. And then uh, later on, a lot of the people that I've known – because of experiences that they had during the space program and all, I'm, I'm not sure what each one of them's exact trigger was that turned them, tripped them over. They came, became extremely spiritual. And, and I myself uh, went on and got a, a doctorate degree in theology through the Reformed Baptist Seminary. And um, we had to go through that line of, of both emotion and educational and experience to be able to where we could handle understanding what's going on in the universe to, to some extent. So uh, am I hitting on any nerve areas and experiences that you may have had that, that brought you more into a, a, a spiritual side of contact with extraterrestrials well, in, in the universe? See, my thing is, and, and I don't think like anybody else on this planet, just so you know, uh, from all my experiences, direct experiences, <clears throat> I'm aware, I don't know if you believe in reincarnation. Oh, yeah, uh, keep going. I'm aware of I'm aware, I'm aware of all my lifetimes, back to Atlantis, back when I was an alien, you name it. I'm aware of all of them, including being with Jesus. So my, my truth is based on what I experienced in Noah's fact, like what Jesus came here to teach. It's not in the Bible. Okay. So I, my, that's why I, I'm going more to the spiritual side, because aliens will not teach us about God. Right. They'll teach us about well, space and dimension and all that, but that's still nothing pertaining to... <clears throat> Higher levels that God created where soul goes to when it leaves this realm, when it's aware and spiritually able to go there. So I had five death experiences. I spent 35 years traveling out of my body, meeting deities, angels, and, and, uh, uh, and spiritual beings on, in different dimensions and stuff. But the problem is they don't talk about God. None of them. The angels, the deities. The deities all think they're God. Lucifer thinks he's God. I mean, he plays God, and he's allowed to. Uh, and he controls a lot of the alien races. But the other thing is, the race right. that I did see, I mean, I was 10 feet from an alien. Uh, it was in my house. My friend was with me. Yep. We took a bath, and we're trying to chase it. Right. But uh, the, the ship took off and everything. 
Right. One of the things we run into, and I say we mean because I, I go along with what you're saying, and, and is that is 